the darkness at thy speaking it was done. Welcome to sermons from Zion Lutheran Church of Gwinner, North Dakota. Zion Lutheran Church is committed to the message of Christ crucified for the forgiveness of sins, for the church and the world. The following sermon is from Rev. Dr. Matthew Richard. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Jesus said, A little while, and you will see me no longer. And again, a little while, and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What is this that he says to us? A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father. So they were saying, What does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he is talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, Is this what you are asking yourselves, what I meant by saying, A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me? Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, She has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy from you. This is the gospel of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. My friends, go for it now, for the future is promised to no one. Celebrate your life while you're at it. Celebrate it right now. Do not wait until your life is over. Eat and drink and be merry, for tomorrow you might die. You also only live once, so now is the time to live and to live at the fullest. Party now, sleep when you are dead. Laugh at the odds and live your life to the fullest so that death will be afraid to take you. Now, these are several of the many catchphrases circulating around in our modern day and age. And in case you did not pick up on it, all of these slogans, all of these catchphrases have the same thing in common. What they have in common is this. These sayings, these slogans, these catchphrases, these buzzwords, they all believe that the present, right now, the present life is good, whereas the future is bad. That is to say, these slogans view life now as full of success and pleasure and happiness that needs to be seized, whereas the future is full of sorrow and pain, sadness and death. Simply stated, my friends, these slogans believe that life goes from good to bad. Yes, from good to bad. Because death is the final killjoy. You see, they believe that death is the nail in the coffin. Death is the end of all goodness. But, is this necessarily true? Yes, is it true? Does life go from good to bad? Does life go from happiness to sorrow? Is this that trajectory that we are on? Meaning that we need to seize the moment for tomorrow may never come. Well, in our gospel reading, our gospel reading from the gospel of John, Jesus says quite the opposite. He shares that you Christians will not encounter success and pleasure and happiness in your life right now, but quite the opposite. You see, you will meet sorrow and distress and pain. Indeed, you will cry and groan with this pain in this life. In this life, you will hurt. And to make things worse, while you are hurting and suffering in this life, the world will dance and party around you and in spite of you as well. 
Indeed, life for the Christian is tough. Life will knock you down, and it keeps knocking you down. Life does not let up. Even the apostles tell us this. They tell us flat out, they say this, in this world you will have trouble. Yes, all kinds of trouble. Your heart will break, you will grow old, and you will begin to fall apart. You will have disappointment after disappointment, heartache upon heartache, trial upon trial. Now, the reason why it is like this is that you and I live in what is called the Valley of Tears, or as they say it in the old days, the Vale of Tears. Yes, we live in this Valley of Tears. You and I, we enter into this valley at the very beginning of our lives, and we stay in this valley until our last dying breath. And unlike a pleasant valley, this valley is dark. It is very dark. This valley contains hardships. It contains suffering. It contains loss, grief, persecution, and pain. It is a valley that is clouded with gloom, where we experience the attacks of the devil, the struggles with that sinful old Adam, that sinful nature that we all have, It also contains the persecution from the world. It ultimately contains that sting of death itself. Now, perhaps you are wondering at this point if I forgot to take an antidepressant pill this morning, or maybe you might be wondering if I'm a natural pessimist, one of those guys who sees that glass is half empty. No, this is not the case. You see, what I am describing to you about this valley of tears is reality, my friends. Indeed, it is reality. This is how things are for you as a Christian in this life, in this valley of tears. This is reality. Yes, Jesus says that in this life, that you will weep, that you will mourn, that you will have pain. As a Christian, you live and you breathe and you have movement, not on the top of those mountains, but within that valley that valley of tears. I can tell you this, though. We do not like the reality of suffering. We do not like to hear about this valley of tears. We would rather not. We would rather plug our ears. We do not like the darkness as well. So we Christians like to pretend that our lives are not in this valley of tears. That is right. We love to avoid the valley of tears at all costs. It makes us uncomfortable. And it goes against the view that the world, that in the world, things are supposed to be great. So we try to make peace with the darkness of the valley. We try to turn the lemons of the valley into lemonade. We convince ourselves that we are overcomers. We say when we get knocked down again, we're going to get back up again. And then when we stand as supposed overcomers, we look into that dark valley of tears And we roar as if we're invincible. But my friends, the truth of the matter is that we are not. We are fooling ourselves. You see, no matter how hard we try to climb out of this valley of tears, and no matter how hard we try to deny it and avoid this valley of tears, there's no escape. You Christians are in this valley where the walls are too steep and where it is too dark. No matter how hard you wipe away the tears of hurt, they keep flowing in life. They keep flowing until your last dying breath. No matter how much you try to dull the pain and the hurt of life, it keeps twisting and stabbing you. In this life, the devil, he continues to attack us. The sinful flesh always longs to sin. The sinful nature longs to wreak havoc in our lives and those around us. And this world, this world continues to spew forth lies. There's simply no end to this. There's no bottom to this stuff. So, the reality for us as Christians, for you, dear Christians, is that you are not high on a mountaintop, but you are deep in the valley. 
It is like this because Christ predicted that there would be trials and suffering and pain in this life. He certainly did. From your birth to your last dying breath, you will experience these hardships, the daily grind, the struggle of the soul, the heaviness of life, the chaos of sin. However, however, Jesus also said something else about this valley of tears. He said that this valley of tears would only be a little while. Yes, he said it would only be a little while. In other words, the day is coming, my friends, when the valley of tears will end. And praise be to God, all things will be made anew. Yes, all things will be made anew because it is only a little while. Sadness lasts only a little while. And then will be changed into gladness. All grief lasts just a little while and then is swallowed up in the end. Pain lasts only a little while and will be remembered no more. You see, life does not go from good to bad, but rather the good news of the gospel, the good news that Jesus proclaims to us this day from his word is this, it's the other way around. It goes from bad to good, and it only takes a little while. Dear baptized Christians, learn to say these words to yourself. Indeed, learn to say these three simple words to yourself a little while. Yes, when the shadows of the valley of tears presses upon you, say a little while, because you know that in a little while it will be over. It will all be over soon, because Jesus promises to see you in his kingdom. After a little while, Jesus, he will wipe away all the tears from all eyes, and he will heal all the hurt. After a little while, he will give you eternal joy. You see, because you are baptized into Christ, You are a Christian, and as a Christian, you wait for the Lord. You know that there will be an end to the pain of the valley of tears. You know that at the end of the valley, there will be no more suffering. There will be no more pain, no more struggle. But the unspeakable joy of seeing Jesus face to face, seeing Jesus and him seeing you as he pulls you out of this valley of tears to his eternal goodness, Yes, in death, the Lord pulls you to himself and he promises to resurrect your body to eternal life. And when he does this, when he resurrects us and he pulls us out of the graves and gives us new bodies, brings us unto himself, oh, the laughter there will be. There will be laughter in unending joy. It will fill your heart It will make you dance, and it will cause you to laugh and sing for an eternity. Dear baptized saints, do not lose heart and do not grow faint this day. Do not panic and do not fret. Be still this hour and be still at this moment here right now. The valley of tears does not last forever. There's an end to the valley. There's an end to the tears. There's an end to the suffering, an end to the persecution, an end to the sin, an end to the pain, and an end to the devil himself. It is only a little while. Be patient. Wait it out. Take courage. And as you wait it out, yes, as you wait it out, dear baptized saints, To get you through this valley, the Lord gives you his word and sacraments. Therefore, cling to the promises of God's word, the promises that are for you. Hang your body and your soul upon his word. Continually receive with open hands the sacrament of the altar that is given and shed for you. Remember your baptisms where God's name was placed upon your head and your heart, marking you as one of the redeemed. Patiently endure any misfortune while comforting yourself with the truth that the Lord is with you and he promises never to leave you nor forsake you. Yes, comfort yourself with Jesus' words that this life is only a little while. Know that as tough as it gets in this life, that the Lord holds not only the beginning but the very end of the world itself. So baptized saints, yes, baptized saints, 
hang on, it is just a little while, and then you will see Jesus face to face where your sorrows and your sadness and your pain will be turned into everlasting joy forever and ever. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you for listening to today's podcast sermon. You can access a full manuscript of today's sermon from Pastor Matthew Richard's blog at www.pastormattrichard.org or visit Zion Lutheran Church's website at www.zionglinner.org. The Lord bless and keep you.